Morning, everyone. Travel Malta, and we are just entering the silent city of Emdina. Which, let me tell you, today is not very silent because we've been swamped by school excursions. There's kids everywhere. Uh, the last time we were here filming in March, you'd recall maybe some of you, it was freezing and it was pouring down rain. Well, it is a far, um, far way away from that today, three months later, four months later, because it is 33 degrees. And it is fabulously warm. And I'm going to stop start this video and show you guys what's happening here at Emdina today. G'day, mate. Beautiful. Just got off at a horse ride for half an hour, but I could do the walk. There's the iconic Emdina glass. So I've talked about the history of this place before, dates back to around 800 BC. I'm not gonna go through it all again. Pretty much everyone you can imagine has either conquered or invaded or tried to take over this place. Um, St. Paul, after he was shipwrecked, converted the leader at that time, who was Publius, to Christianity after he cured his father from a terminal illness, says the story. And that is why Malta is a um, predominantly a Catholic, Roman Catholic place. So this place is just awesome. History everywhere, the street corners, the lamps, the statues. It is made up of little laneways everywhere. Much of it is uh, original. Some of it was destroyed by an earthquake. It was rebuilt a couple of times, partially reduced in size, just fantastic. Historically, the nobility of Malta resided here and many still do. Much of the property here is handed down from one generation to the next. Here is St. Paul's Cathedral. And the Cathedral Museum just here behind me. What a place. Always try to be respectful to the residents here because people do live inside these walls. How good would that be? One thing I've pointed out before are these pregnant windows. I love them. So I've discussed these previously. The idea is that in the old days where they're constantly getting invaded, enemies would sit under these windows and when women and children would poke their heads out to see if anyone's around, obviously, when the men were out at war, they would get snatched. So people would hide under here and jump up there and grab the, grab the wives and all the women and the kids and obviously take them for their own purposes and slavery. Hence these um, bulged out iron bars, pregnant windows. You can still come out and have a look and you're not going to get snatched down into the street. What a genius idea. Okay, there's about a hundred kids over that way. Hello. So I think I'm going to do a turn the other way. But yeah, I was just stopped by some uh, followers of our page who recognise me walking around. That's kind of embarrassing. Um, the legendary Fontanella Tea House, guys. You've got to come here for at least a dessert, preferably a dinner. I'll just stick my head in and show you the place. I'll be back soon here. Look at this, it's fantastic. You can see upstairs, it's glorious. Fontanella at Emdina, gotta get here. Guys, it's hard to do this place any kind of justice with a, with a five or six minute video. I'm trying my best. So, as you can probably tell, I absolutely love Emdina. 
and I'm going to finish off this video. There's a bunch of lovely ladies here. Hello, ladies. Enjoy Malta. Okay, they don't speak English, that's okay. But have a look at the view. Have a look at the view. This is from the rear bastion walls. I've just pretty much walked through the entire center of this city, which used to be the capital, Mdina. It's about 10 a.m. What a place. Over and out for now, put up some photos later.